We're now able to query for the 20 most recent posts from Firestore. Our goal now is to show that in the UI. We're going to render the list of posts in a component called the Recycler view. I've previously walked through the details of a Recycler view and what the benefits are of using a Recycler view, so I'm not going to spend too much time on the nuances there. I'll leave a link to that in the description, but know that we're just doing a standard Recycler view implementation for our Instafire app. The first thing I want to do is open up the corresponding layout file for posts, go into the design tab, and we want to bring out a recycler view. So we need to add a library for that, and Android Studio will help us to add that. And then we want to modify the attributes. And sometimes I find that I'm not able to see the attributes pane for the recycler view. It seems to be a bug, and so in order to fix that, I can go into build and then say rebuild project. and Usually that will fix it for me. Okay, so now we're able to see the recycler view. I'm gonna give this a ID of RV posts and the width and height will be match parent so that the recycler view takes up the full screen. Okay, now going back into post activity, there are a couple different steps to using the recycler view. First, we're going to create the layout file, which represents one row in our recycler view. Next, we wanna create a data source here in our Kotlin file. Then we want to create the adapter. And then we want to bind the adapter and layout manager to the recycler view. Okay, so let's first start by creating a layout file which represents one post. We're going to create a new layout file inside of resources. I'll call this item post. And the root element can be a linear layout. Let's start with a really simple layout. We can have two text views at the top, one which will be larger for the username, and then right below that, the relative timestamp. Below that, we'll have an image view, and then below that, we'll have a description. Let's drag out a text view and give this the ID of TV username. We'll give this some sample text and also increase the font to make it larger. Now we'll drag out another text view for the relative time, give this some sample text, and then we'll drag in an image view. And we wanna hard code the height here to be 300 dp and change the scale type to be center crop. Center crop means that we scale the image uniformly so that both dimensions, width and height, will be equal or larger than the corresponding dimension of the view. Basically, this means that the image will take up the full space of the image view, which is what we want. Next, we'll drag out a text view for the description, give it an ID of TV description, and give us some sample text of my super cool description. We'll also add some margin tops in between each element. At this point, we've built out the basic layout for each post. One enhancement we can do is to embed each post inside of a card view so it has some elevation, and that way we can easily tell where each post starts and ends. We have to include the library for card view if you want to use it in our project. And once we do that, we can swap out the root element of our view to be card view and add a layout margin of 8 dp on that root element. We can review what this looks like in the text tab for the layout. The root element is a card view, and inside of that is a linear layout. The first element is a username, which has this text appearance of large, which makes the font bigger. Below that is the TV relative time, and one thing actually I want to add here is to decrease the size and make text size 12 SP. Below that you have the image view, followed by the description. And notice the margin tops on both of those, which provides some vertical spacing. Now we have our item post layout file defined, which will represent one post in our UI. Let's go back into post activity. So we're done with this first item. Now let's create a data source. This is as simple as adding a, another private late init var, which will represent the posts. We're going to declare this as a mutable list of posts because in onCreate, we'll initially set posts to be an empty list. And when the asynchronous call to our Firestore backend succeeds, then we'll update or mutate this list of posts to have the most up-to-date information. So now we're done with creating the data source. Next, we can create the adapter. Let's create a new class called posts adapter. And then similar to other adapters that we've built in the past, this is going to take in two parameters, one which is the context, and then second, the list of posts. 
and this is going to inherit from the base adapter in recycler view. Okay, and the adapter is parameterized by a view holder. And so in order to define that view holder, first we're going to create an inner class called view holder. And this will inherit from recycler view view holder. You have to change to constructor invocation, and then we need to add the constructor parameter. Okay, now that we have the view holder defined, we can parameterize the adapter with this. And now we can implement the three methods that are required for every adapter. So I'm going to move, move the inner class view holder to the bottom just because that's my personal preference. And we can override these three methods. The easiest is get item count because that's it's going to be the size of posts. Next, we'll implement on create view holder. And the idea here is that we need to return a view holder. The view holder takes in a view in the constructor. So first, what we'll do is create the view. And the way we'll do that is with the layout inflator. And we'll pass in a context. And then inflate the resource file item post. This takes in two more parameters, the view group, the root view group, which will be parent. And then attach to root is false. Once we have the view defined, now we can return view holder with this view. And then finally, in on bind view holder, we need to take the view holder, which is passed in here, and bind the data which is coming at that position. So I'm going to de define a method called bind on the view holder class, which takes in the post at that position. Let's define this method. Okay, and the idea here is that we want to call methods on the item view. So I'll say item view dot TV username, and the text of that will be some attribute on the post. So I'll say post dot user dot username. And this compiler is complaining because user is technically nullable as per the constructor. But there might be a null pointer exception, but we're just going to add a question mark here so uh, this doesn't complain. Now we'll do item view dot TV description dot text is equal to post dot description. Now we'd like to load in the image view for the post. In order to do image loading, let's use a library called Glide. So I'll say Glide Android. And then the first hit is the GitHub page for Glide. If you scroll down, you can see these two dependencies that you need to add if you want to use Glide. So we'll open up the build.gradle file, which is located in the app module. Add those, sync now. And now if we go back into post adapter, we should be able to say glide.width. And now you pass in a context. And then you pass in a URL to load, which will be post.image URL. And then you have to load it into a target. And the target will be an, a, a view, which will be item view dot iv post and finally the last view on the screen which we haven't filled out yet is the relative time and luckily there's a really easy way to do this with something built into java or kotlin so tv relative time dot text is equal to we're going to use the date utils class and there's a method called get relative time span string and you pass in the time in milliseconds of whatever you want to convert into relative time. So what this is doing is it's looking at the current time and it's comparing that with the time you passed in here. And this will create for us the relative time. So it'll say one hour ago, half an hour ago, two days ago, things like that. Now that we have the post adapter, we need to actually use this in the posts activity. So let's define an adapter up here. This will, this will take in two parameters, one which is the context, and the second is the data source. And finally, we need to 
bind the adapter and layout manager to the recycler view. So we'll say RV posts dot adapter is equal to the adapter we just defined, and the layout manager will just be the simple linear layout manager. And this takes in a uh, context as the constructor argument. The final step is once we get the data back from Firestore, we need to update our adapter and tell it that we have received updated data. So I'm going to update the member variable posts with all the new data that we got back. And then we need to update the adapter. Notify data set changed. And one more thing we can do is clear whatever old data was in the posts. Let's try it. So if everything worked, we should hopefully now see a UI showing our list of posts. And there should be three of them because that's what we have in our Firestore database. Okay, awesome, so you can see here we have three posts and it looks like there's one small issue here which is that the image for the panda pick and the golden gate bridge pick are the same. So I probably didn't copy over the image URL correctly. But for each post, you can tell that we're sh properly showing the username, relative time, image, and description. To fix the panda picture, let's go back into Chrome, go into Firebase, and tap on storage. And let's get the URL for the panda pick. I'm going to copy this, go into database. And then this image URL we should update like that. Now that we updated that attribute of a post, our app is listening for changes on the post collection, so it should automatically update, which you can see here. Now we're able to render the list of all posts from Firestore. In the next video, we'll implement the profile activity so we can see posts from a single user. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.